is P Valley time. And before we break yep, down I, P Valley, P Valley, letter, let's take a look I, at the trailer to kind of jog back, your memory back. of the things that happened. Here I, we go. They say Jesus come like a thief in the night. I ain't met them no Patrice Woodbine. I did cut you out. It's why I like nothing happened last night. Me and you ain't meant for the outside. Pays the bills, Derek. That's it. Sure, that's it. What would you do if somebody took all your money? Kill him. Mm. Boy. Well, last night that water got thick, ladies and gentlemen. It got thick. It got thick. So we learned a little bit more about Uncle Clifford. And man, damn, he got deals with everybody. Uncle Clifford yeah. even got the sheriff in his back pocket a little bit. And little he went bit. down a little bit, little bit. Everybody now knows that he's in deep water. And I was going to say deep doo-doo, but I don't want to do that. I want y'all to be thinking I'm trying to run little underlying jokes here. But he's in deep. <laughs> Water had the, the eviction notice in 15 days put on the door pink, right? He goes down there, hollers at the sheriff, tells sheriff, yada yada yada. Then he goes and hollers at the mayor who ain't having it. The mayor, the mayor's like, We've been trying to get you up out of here for a long time anyway, he ain't having it, right? But the main yeah. storyline for me was my girl Mercedes being stuck in jail. And she thinks she's going to come back and work at the pink, but that crooked letter is the new star attraction. The crooked letter has taken over. There's going to be beef between them two. I can tell you that right now. But an alliance was formed between Autumn Knight. I'm going to call her Autumn Knight again. She's earned my respect back. (laughs) And and Mercedes. But the other storyline was we finally got a chance to see what we think is either her ex-husband or boyfriend who's looking for her in the city. Larry, right. impressions of last night's episode. Good episode last night. It was a good episode. And it was it was uh it was interesting to see. Um I I I don't want to necessarily call it an alliance between Mercedes and Larry. And it's an alliance. Night. It's an alliance. I, it's a business alliance. Why. Let me tell you why I'm not, I don't really want to call it an alliance. Okay. Because I think Autumn Knight is using Mercedes because the only reason why she went and bailed Mercedes out and went to get and let her in on things is because she knew Mercedes didn't want to go back to the club. And most importantly, she could no longer go to that check cashing place or that money transfer place and send all that money on her own because they put limits on it and they said, sorry. Nothing we can do for you. You're done. So she was. So she was basically getting locked out of her own business or her own scam, whatever she's running. Mm-hmm. She couldn't do it anymore. She needed somebody that could do it. She knew Mercedes was in trouble financially. She knew that she didn't want to go back to the club. So this mm-hmm. is a way. She's like she basically saw a perfect opportunity and she just seized upon it. I don't think she cares any lick about Mercedes. Okay, and I well, think she's gonna let, find let, that out the hard way. Well, let me stop you there then. Couldn't she have picked Gidget to do it? She could have had picked Crooked Letter to do it. Why did she pick Mercedes? She could have had picked anybody to do that scam with her. I think because Mercedes is smart. Mercedes is is Mercedes is resourceful. Mm-hmm. Mercedes is is loyal from what she saw to us, you know. So yeah. I think that I think that she feels like if I get Mercedes in here, Mercedes will be a good will be a good worker. She'll be a good earner. But mm-hmm. I just don't think I think Mercedes is gonna realize later that she's getting played. I and mean, I don't know how that's gonna work out, but either way, she you you talked all around your body and your elbow to get to your nose, it still formed an alliance that Autumn Knight picked. She picked the alliance to be with her because she could have got Uncle Clifford to do it, for all we know. But you know why she didn't get Uncle Clifford to do it? Because he's dirty as hell already. Yeah, he's, he's like, dirty. No, I wouldn't I deal with him. No, I would. Hell no. Are you I kidding deal me? With him. Did dirty. you see, did you see the way they looked at him when he walked in that barbershop? Oh hell no. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, ain't nobody fooling around with no Uncle Clifford like that. But no. What what I want to know is who is the guy chasing behind the Autumn Night? 
Well, it looked like it looked like it must have been. It must have been either. Well, I don't know because either it could it could be someone that that she's dealt with in the past, or it could very well be that the person that whom suitcase she took up, she picked up and took that ID from. Oh. That could have been somebody from her mm-hmm. life and not right. from Autumn Knight's life because he's mm-hmm. in there looking for that person and he may think that she's alive. Mm-hmm. And really what it may turn out to be is that is that he's gonna run into the wrong person. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking at this point, I, I I don't know. I don't know how that part's gonna turn out. They keep on piecemealing that story out a little by little so we can figure it out. Part of me's like, I'm just gonna enjoy it and not try and really figure it out because I don't want to. You know, but it seems like that 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 storyline seems like it might be interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see where this relationship is going to go with her and Mercedes. Um, I can tell you right now, Mississippi Crooked Letter, she is going to be a nightmare to mm-hmm. deal with. If you see yep. the way her personality is, is I don't want to say changing, but it's coming out the way she, I guess she truly is, you know, where she's thinking that she's the hot shit and she I just, mean she got her confidence man she got her wings you yeah, know but it's more than just confidence right now it's it's like with the girls it's it's moved from confidence to arrogance mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we saw that rolled back a little bit when her when her boyfriend came up there and she looked real scared like he was going to put hands on her and she looked real timid and real scared and what's his name? Not you know I, they didn't really focus on it, but when you saw what's his name in the background, Diamond was just hovering back there. It was almost like he was waiting, like please, bro, do something. Yeah, he was. Please he, put a he, hand up and smack or do something, mm-hmm. so I have the excuse that I need to snap every bone in your spine. Mm-hmm. You know, right? So, and um, I, I got this weird feeling now. Y'all know that I have made crazy claims that have come true. I got this weird feeling somebody's gonna wind up killing Diamond. I just got this feeling. It, really? just, it, yesterday, when they let Baby Daddy that we know beats on the crooked letter walk right on past and Diamond ain't do nothing, there was really no exchange. I was saying to myself, they setting Diamond up for a failure. I don't know if he's gonna go to jail, get shot, something. There's gonna be some plot that's gonna happen to Diamond. I see it coming. See it yeah, I could, I could see. I think he might end up going to jail over it because, I mean, they're in Mississippi. I mean, it really, no matter where you are in this country as a black man, you can't just go kill a white dude and think you're not going to jail over it. Even if you're in the right, you're still likely going to jail over it. But in Mississippi, they may not even give you the opportunity to, to, to explain how you were in the right. They'll just throw your ass up under the jail. So I think that might be the case. I mean, honestly... I, I mean, I don't think they have I don't think they have gators in uh in Mississippi like they do in New Orleans, but they're not that far away. I might if I was Diamond, I might be like, yo, we're gonna take these girls on a road trip to another club. I need you to come with. And then when you're down in Louisiana, just take him down there to buy you and feed him to the gators and right. be done with it. Oh, they got gators in Mississippi now, bro. They got yeah, them, bro. they got them all around that area. You, if if you're gonna be walking in some river water, you better be on the damn airboat because you might lose your pinky toe. Round them gators. Yeah, man. And there you now, go. Just go ahead, go ahead and chop them up and send them down there to the gators. Next time he puts hands on her, just go ahead and deal with them. Now, now you know? th- that was a character they introduced last night that we got to talk about. This can we talk about divorce big girl that can sing? I don't mean <laughs> sing. Her ass can sing. So yeah. you have the chick that the di- that just getting a divorce. She had her alimony money. She came to see Mercedes. Fell in love with the crooked letter and then fell asleep in the damn club and wound up driving about to run straight into the store where Autumn Knight was wiring money and the police got her, put her in jail with Mercedes and her mom. And the mom started having church in a jail cell, which would be a better place for her to have a damn church and give Mercedes her money back. But anyway, the big girl starts singing. I was like, damn, this chick got pipes, golden pipes. And she was yeah. in there singing. And Larry, did you hear what she said? Oh, After she no. got the divorce, she slept with the mama. <laughs> she <laughs> said she got a divorce. That's why I was shaking my head. She said that she said, I got a divorce because I cheated on 
my husband with his mama. What? And I said, oh, my Lord. Man, these some scandalous Ooh. moms up in this damn show, man. These mamas man. is a trip, boy. Uh, I mean, these mamas is a trip. Larry, is there going to be any more to her character? Was that it for her? Well, she's a one and oh, no. they, they, they gave her way, way too much screen time to just to drop her up out of there. She's going to be there. She's going to be around probably for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up going over to that church and she's oh. going to, she might end up being sort of the bridge between Mercedes and her. Cause she's obviously, she likes girls. She's up there. She's a fan of Mercedes. I, I just, and she's, she can sing. So she's probably going to end up going to Mercedes mom's church and I don't know what else is going to happen with her, but she's going to, I'm almost certain she's going to be around probably for the rest of the season. Yeah, we, we'll see. I mean, the mama can at least even if not her, every episode, maybe a couple episodes. The mom can let her lead the, lead the choir the way that chick can sing. That chick could sing, man. I was like, whoa. Now, yeah. let us talk about Little Murder. Now, Larry has Cross Colors made a comeback? Because I mean, did you see that damn outfit he was wearing when he was trying to get Uncle Clifford to say, "Let's go public with the relationship." Oh, he's, not, he's not a little murder anymore. She said a little murder, and he said Lamarcus. Yeah, whatever he wants to be called. La murder, Lamarcus, whatever the hell is. Brother, wear something else <sighs> other than cross colors. I thought that the explanation Uncle Clifford gave was spot on because I was trying to figure out why wasn't Uncle Clifford wanting to go public with the relationship. And when he broke down them going together, in the South or what may have you, and how people still are kind of reluctant to accept the behavior. I you thought that was kind of well, reluctant, period. Oh, I, to mean, accept the behavior. I mean, Uncle Clifford said the last two dudes went for a stroll down the river walk, ended up dead floating in it. That's not kind of. I well, mean, that's Larry, let me tell you something. Them dudes that do that, the ones that are doing that, some of them is having homosexuality too. But they right. portray it like they're not. So I right. mean, let, let's not get it twisted here. Don't let some of these two dudes who act like they super against it ain't somewhere doing it themselves. But right. I mean, I, I feel what you're saying on that. And um, I thought that that was the greatest answer Uncle Clifford could give about them not going out and trying to have some kind of working relationship in the public. Yeah. Now, you know. I think that's partly true, but I actually think he likes Lil Murder, and I think that he doesn't really... I think because Uncle Clifford is who he is, and Uncle Clifford is obviously out and flamboyant mm -hmm. and everything, I think he understands what that means to be out in public, and I think he does... I think he believes that Lil Murder doesn't quite understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And I think, he, I think he likes Lil Murder and is trying to protect him. He's not just trying to protect himself. I think he's really trying to protect Lil Murder. Because I honestly believe that that Uncle Clifford would has enough has enough knowledge and understanding of how things are, and he's been out long enough that I think he would know how to navigate those situations, whereas Lil Murder would not. And and I so I think he I think him saying that's really looking out more for Lil Murder than it is for himself. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now let, let, let us not get off Isaiah Washington, ladies and gentlemen, who <laughs> is playing the mayor. And damn, he's playing the hell out the mayor. But we can't forget Isaiah Washington is a he's a, almost a, a you know an Oscar caliber actor. The dude can act. Yeah, and this is he, the first time I've seen him in a role like this. Normally, he plays like a such a nice, respectful dude. Right. That's exactly what I was telling my wife. You're used to seeing him on like ER shows like that, and he's yeah. doing this show. And he, whatever I thought Clifford had on him, is not a big deal because he's just going to the hilt. They're going to get this casino done, and he's yeah. just counting the days down to that strip club is cut. Um, Larry, how is Clifford going to get out of this? Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, he's going to get out of it. I don't know how he's going to get out of it. I'm assuming that it's probably going to have something to do with Mercedes bringing in Uncle Clifford into this, this scam. And he's going to get, he's going to end up getting the money. If not from, from Mercedes, he's going to get it from Autumn Knight. Or and Corbin, get, or Corbin. Don't forget about Corbin. 
I'm not sure he's going to get it from Corbin because I don't think Corbin has the cash to put up like that. Corbin's rich on he has he's land rich, but I don't think Corbin has the cash like that to put up. Hmm. You know, because he didn't get that big inheritance like his brothers did, and his brothers don't have it because his brothers blew through their money, which is the reason why they want to sell the property. So Corbin got the land. No, you know, and, Cor and Corbin got money, dude. Remember, he was trying to pay off Andre. He had stacks in the club. Corbin got money. Okay, he, maybe he, he does. He's well, got money. It could be Corbin, but I somehow, I mean, it could be. I don't know. I mean, I honestly, I think whoever. Whoever decides to help them, they're gonna. It's gonna be a a, a relationship that's gonna go into the next season because I think they'll end the season with ho however that plays out, going into business with Uncle Clifford. It's no longer gonna be Uncle Clifford's joint alone. It's gonna be like now Autumn Knight or Mercedes or both of them are now part owners of the Pink and their mm -hmm. work because I like Mercedes said. I'm never going back there to dance again. Her thing could be maybe she goes back, but now she's not dancing. Now she's, you know, the she's owner. one of the owners. Maybe she's managing. Maybe she's a house mom or whatever they call those women that, that help manage the girls, you know? So maybe she goes back there in a different, in a, in a different role, a different capacity than she's been there in the past. But I think she's going to end up being part owner her autumn night, Maybe Corbin too. I don't know. I I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out that that all four of them bought in with Uncle Clifford. You mm -hmm. know, I can see that. Now we must we must end this review on Mercedes's damn mama, man. That lady, and, and not only the mama, but the other lady that was in jail that was a mother getting mad, and she don't even know why the hell Mercedes was mad at her mama. I like, yeah. like ladies and gentlemen. Y'all can call me evil, whatever name you want to call me. There are situations that are legitimate when you can have so much disdain for your mama because of what they have done to you that you can't forgive them. I mean, there's I can name them all. But in this situation, they explain how by the time Mercedes was five or six, the mama had already done put bills in her name. What the? Right. Oh, man. And you took this girl money, which was her great escape. And not yeah. only did you take her money, but you took the building she had chosen to be the great escape. And for a minute there, Larry, I was almost under the impression Mercedes was going to fall for the okie doke, the old banana in the tailpipe that she has always done with her mother, where her mother tries to use God as the excuse, the end all be all for everything, and rope her back in like rope a dope. And Mercedes yeah. gave her that hug and said, you dead to me. And that made my Jello cookie night. <laughs> Thoughts on that scene, Larry? The mama and that scene in jail. You know, when I saw that, I was sort of, I was sort of wondering, like, what was the mom thinking? Because when Mercedes said that and she got up and left, the mom, if you notice, had a little bit of a smirk on her face. She had a little bit of a smile, like mm. she was, like, what she just heard pleased her. And I, I'm not sure if, if, if what she, if the reason why she had that smirk on her face was because everybody else saw Mercedes get down on her knees and go and 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 say something to her, mm -hmm. or if she felt relieved because now with Mercedes saying you're dead to me, it feels to her like there's a like there's a weight off of her shoulder. She doesn't have to worry about carrying that burden of her daughter anymore. She can just do whatever she wants to do. She didn't even have to worry about trying to figure out how to deal with this stuff with the with the church. She just whatever. I took it. Yeah, I did it. So what? It's mine. You gave me the money. I had the money in in, in an account in my name. What are you going to do about it? You gave it to me. You have no you have no legal recourse whatsoever. The, the church is building is mine. Done. So she may just feel she may have been smirking for some relief. But I'm kind of curious to know what was going on in her mind in that moment because that was a that was a definitely a, a strange reaction for a person whose child just told them that they are dead to them. Yeah. That is not the reaction and, most people would. And, and further elaborate on that mama, that mama has never been able to make it without using Mercedes. That mama yeah. has been using Mercedes since she stuck her nose through her vagina, using yeah. her name on credit, getting money from her the whole time she's been at the strip club, all while rebuking the strip club in the name of Jesus. And to, to further add insult to injury, now that she's got the church, it's going to take some time for her to build up tithes and offering. 
how is she going to survive if Mercedes is really and truly done with her? She's going to lose that building probably in the first six weeks. I don't think she is because I think I think she is going to pull over some of the people from the old church. Mm -hmm. I think are probably going to leave and go to the new church. And I think those ladies that were locked up in that jail are probably going to go over to the new church. You might end up that's where true. you have that's a church true. that that's mm -hmm. primarily a woman's ministry where you have all these women that are from, you know, wherever, right. you know, and maybe that's where she starts is going to the jails, going to these places where people are suffering, you know, and, and they're having hardship. You go there and you bring them in and, mm -hmm. Man, Larry, you know, can you imagine the buffoonery that would be going on in that church? They ain't going to do nothing but bash men and probably play Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion WAP video every damn Sunday. The kind of uh, shenanigans that's going to be going on in that damn church. They, they still I mean, ain't letting no tithes and offering. Any church where that woman is going to be the priest or pastor or whatever you want to call her is going to be buffoonery because she is nothing but a charlatan. That's you it. know, that's it. She's a charlatan. That's it. And and she's a thief and a liar. And and I mean, so it doesn't really matter who goes to that church. It's it's not it's not gonna be a good place because she's you can't have the head of you can't have the head of something be rotten. I mean, if if she's rotten, if she's at the core of this of this of this organization, it's gonna be a rotten organization because the core is rotten. It, it, and Larry, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. How can this business, how can this organization last when she can't even manage her money? She she cannot manage her money. What they're gonna come yeah. to this, they're gonna come to the church, the door gonna open, but the lights and the air conditioning gonna be off. I mean, yeah. she, she can't manage her money. I don't know what kind of sermon she thinks she's gonna be preaching, but it sounds to me like her best sermons can be served cold in jail. That's where her ministries need to be at if that's what she thinks she's going to do. I don't see it working out well for her and this organization. Yeah. I, I you know, I what I thought was interesting was is that I feel like Mercedes mm -hmm. and maybe this is a good lesson for her, you know, and maybe maybe other some of the other women in that club probably need to learn that same lesson. But mm -hmm. I feel like they're, you know, the the way that she treated that that uh the guy who turned out to be one of the the police officers or sheriffs who oh, was yeah, there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the way that she treated him in the club mm -hmm. and then when she saw him on the job you know he was upset with her but he still treated her with dignity and gave her his jacket and said it gets cold in there right. and and i i hope that's a lesson because i feel like so many people you know, at times they get locked into the, the such the small little world that they live in that they uh -huh. forget there's a much bigger, broader world outside. And as long as you stay in that little world, maybe you're safe. But the moment you step outside of that, you realize there could be consequences for your behavior that you've done inside your little world. There may be what? ripples that happened outside and you may feel those once you step out. But do, and, do, do you understand why she had beef with him? They flashed back. He kept trying to touch her. I do. And I also remember that she took his wallet. Oh, yeah, know? she did. And he he also attended that church. Right. And so I, I, I mean, I get why they I get why they had beef. But he still I, I guess, you know, he I mean, in, in that moment, he, he was angry still because he was like, I still haven't got my wallet back. But in that moment, he could have been a real a-hole to her. He and he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't. And I hope that she realizes that maybe the way someone is treating you in this club is not the entirety of who they are. Just like, just like I'm sure if, if she met a man and really wanted to be in a relationship with the man and he was like, nah, I can't date some stripper. I see what you guys do in there. She can't, she may have to explain, look, the, when I dance, when I'm shaking, when I'm taking tips for money, this is not who I am outside of work. This is just a small part of who I am. I mm -hmm. hope that they, and this is the thing that gets me is that I often, and I, I've had friends that are, that were strippers and they, they will say, oh, men are terrible. I see the way men act and they get in there. I don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but you have to remember just the way you are when you are in that club is a small part of who you are or what you are, or what you can be. And 
when you leave, you're somebody else. You're at work. You're someone else. And it, and and the way a guy is when he goes to a strip club is a small part of who he is. Like you're not going to go and see a guy that may be, you know, may go to the club and he may be a little bit of aggress- a little aggressive and he's throwing money and whatever else. You're not going to see him act the same way if he goes to a room full of church women or if he goes to a room with a bunch of his mom's friends. You're not going to see him act in the same way. It's it's situational and people act act and respond differently. Mm-hmm. And so just the way they're different, I hope they recognize the men are different. I think it was almost good learning moments for her. I'm not sure if she took that, if she got that lesson, but I hope she did. Right. And that is oh. a good place to park this review. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming.